In a recent video, I announced several new pool quizzes that test how much you know about the game. One of the quizzes deals with pool physics principles. In this video series, I demonstrate answers to selected questions in that quiz. This is part 3, covering questions 31 through 50. Enjoy! A stun shot creates the most amount of cut-induced throw, causing me to miss the shot. Adding inside spin dramatically reduces the amount of throw, allowing me to pocket this ball with a pure ghost ball aim. This is because when the cue ball surface slides against the object ball surface during contact with faster relative speed, the surfaces don't engage as well so there is less friction. With faster shot speed and inside, the throw is even less. If the amount of outside spin is less than the gearing amount, there is throw and spin transfer in the cut-induced throw direction. The line of centers is shown in yellow and the thrown object ball direction is shown in red. Because there is less than gearing outside spin, the cue ball slides along the object ball during contact, rubbing in the CIT direction. This throws the object ball to the right of the line of centers and imparts a small amount of counterclockwise spin. When there is more than gearing outside spin, the object ball throws in the spin-induced throw direction. In this case, the cue ball is rubbing backwards on the object ball during contact, which throws the object ball to the left of the line of centers. The throwing force also imparts a small amount of clockwise spin to the object ball. Here's an example where the line of centers of the frozen balls head straight to the pocket. With a square hit on the one ball, which is close to a half ball hit on the three, the three gets thrown way off line. This type of shot requires a line of centers hit on the one ball. Here's the necessary ghost ball position, and here's the required line of aim for the shot. Again, with a line of centers hit, the frozen object ball is not thrown at all. Here's the shot. Here I am playing solids and need to pocket the 8 for the win. With a small gap between the 8 and 11, a center ball hit makes the cue ball and 8 stop in place. With backspin, you can transfer a little topspin to the 8, helping it go forward, but it is difficult to get much ball motion. The only way to reliably pocket the 8 here is with a follow shot to herd the ball in. If the balls are instead frozen, the 8 naturally moves forward with a stop shot. And with more shot speed, you can even pocket the 8. And with speed and backspin, you can easily send the 8 forward even faster. You can also get a herding follow shot to work here, but there is a risk of scratching. The most reliable shot here is a draw shot with medium fast speed. With a small gap like this, the 13 still gets thrown, even though the 11 will cut the 13 when hit at an angle. Here it is being thrown to the right, and here it is being thrown to the left. Again, a line of center is hit results in no throw. When the gap is large like this, the cut effect dominates the throw effect, and the 13 goes in the cut direction. Here the 11 is cutting the 13 to the left. 
And here, the 11 is cutting the 13 to the right. Again, it goes straight with a line of centers hit. When the gap size is exactly 3 eighths of an inch, the throw cancels the cut over a wide range of angles. As before, there is no cut or throw with a line of centers hit. But regardless of the angle or direction the 11 is driven into the 13, the 13 still goes straight. This is one of the most amazing physics principles of pool. The most common situation where there can be a significant weight difference is on coin-operated bar box tables, where the cue ball is sometimes heavier and larger so it can be distinguished from the object balls in the ball return mechanism. To exaggerate the weight difference effects in this video, we are using combinations of pool and carom balls, which have noticeably different weight and size. With equal weight balls, a square hit stun shot with no top or bottom spin results in a stop shot, where the cue ball stops dead in place. A heavier cue ball drives forward with stun. It takes more effort to draw a heavier cue ball. Some of the backspin is lost to slow the cue ball's natural forward motion. This leaves less spin to accelerate the cue ball backwards. This clip shows why the cue ball hops off the rack. Because the cue hits the cue ball at a slight downward angle and with fast speed, the cue ball bounces and is airborne the entire way to the rack. Anytime the cue ball hits the one ball while airborne after one or more bounces, it will hop in the air. When the object ball is very close to or frozen to a cushion, speed has almost no effect on bank direction. This bank goes both at fast speed and at slow speed with the exact same aim. Again, this is because the object ball doesn't have time or distance to develop forward roll with either of these shots. This bank goes with a straight hit and no cut angle. Here is another view of the same shot. With an outside cut instead, the object ball comes up short of the pocket. This is because the friction between the balls throws the object ball a little and transfers some right spin to the object ball, causing it to rebound more to the right. With an inside cut, the object ball goes long due to throw and left spin imparted to the object ball. Did you see the rebound angle go more left than expected? Spin transfer from the cue ball to the object ball also has a big effect on banks. Here, right spin on the cue ball transfers left or reverse spin to the object ball, which makes it bank short. And left spin on the cue ball transfers right or running spin to the object ball, which makes it go long. I hope you enjoy this video series answering all the pool physics quiz questions. If you want a challenge, see how well you can do on all the new pool quizzes. Links to the quiz resource page and all videos used in this series are available in the video description. Have fun with the quizzes, and good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.
Thank you.